everyone, this is Matthew Kinslow, author to Juggling the Issues, Living with Asperger's Syndrome. And in this video, I want to respond to a question that I was posed when I was live on Sirius XM Radio last week. And the question is, is it that autistics cannot socialize? Or is it that they really want to socialize, but they're a bit nervous or other factors? And all of those things I want to tackle in this video. And just to say, I already have a few videos about autism and socialness. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the longest chapter in my book, chapter 12 is entitled Shyness and Social Interactions. And so when I was posed that question live on radio, I gave my answer and I still stand by that answer. So again, is it that we who have autism do not want to socialize, we're anti-social, or could it be that we actually want to but we're just nervous? And so I can't speak for every single person out there since everybody's different, but I think this is the trend and it's not just me, but there are other people, other people that I know who are just like me, that they would side with me on this. So A, I was nervous. I was just very nervous and shy to put my foot forward. So psychologically speaking, it's kind of a bit of a conundrum because when I was real young, that's when I got discriminated and teased the most. I was literally even voted out of people's presence and such. And these were my own neighbors. I think my older memories just twisted my perceptions later on in life. So later in life when I would uh, be told no or later or just go away, then I think I took it personally because I was applying the same feelings I had when I was younger. And since I was treated like that when I was younger a bit more often than not, I guess I assumed that people again would be annoyed with me after a while. I just didn't want to feel those hurt feelings anymore. But then I had a couple of friends in high school who told me, you know, if you go up to them and they act like that, then they're the ones with the problem. They're not really being a good friend. And of course, I understood most of the time when I couldn't participate in things because, yeah, people had either clarinet pra practice or sports or a uh, sister's birthday party or anything like that. But what it all comes down to is I was nervous. And currently, I, I have four points. And and this one transcends all the points, actually, the first one, that I am a nervous person. I'm very shy, and a lot of us are shy. And truthfully, from the bottom of my heart, all throughout school, all throughout church, all throughout Rangers, etc., I always, always just desired to socialize, to talk, to just hang out with people. But again, I didn't because I was nervous and I was kind of a bit worried. What if they would get annoyed with me after a while? What if they just told me no and I might take it personally? Or what if it's the things that I'm going to bring out in the next three points that I have to make. But I think this is another proof that some of us on the spectrum just desire so much to socialize because I've had dreams all throughout life, especially even middle school and high school, when friends of mine, classmates of mine, appeared in my dream or were about to appear in my dream and almost every single time I had such dreams it went wrong or they didn't show up and I just felt more lonely and left down. Then when I woke up I felt this forlorn feeling which I described in my book and other YouTube videos but it, it was a strange sense because I, I just felt alone and such and then there have been of course a lot of other dreams where I was just teased and laughed at and such and I woke up with the same forlorn feelings but I did have one dream I believe it was in 2020 I made a YouTube video right afterward about it and in the dream I was being teased and discriminated again but I finally finally took some stand not to like be furious with the teasers but to educate the teasers that I'm a human being and such and it for the first time turned out to be a very happy dream but unfortunately it was just a dream because I do wish that everybody on the planet would be accepting toward us and there have been some times when I finally was trying to muster up the courage and sometimes I did and by the time I did that then it just fell apart. Maybe they didn't want me to be with them or maybe it was just too late and I don't know, the bell rang or they had to leave or something. In fact, I have a friend, a YouTube friend named Jumbo Plane Spotting and he is also on the autistic spectrum. I support him and he supports me. He's a phenomenal plane spotter. But he commented and gave me permission to say this in the YouTube video when he would go to a good summer camp that they would go to the pool twice a week and there would be a playground area where they would eat and wait for the pool to open. Um, and he said, and because it was a public park, other people, parents, kids, dogs, people, etc., were there. But he expressed that he really wanted to socialize, but didn't have the confidence for that. And sometimes he managed to say hi, but other times he just stood there, hyping himself up for like 10 minutes until he realized that they already left. And that's kind of the story of my life because I would just stand there, whether it was at the uh, the spot where all my peers would be at during nutrition or whether I was at the high school youth group or wherever I would just stand there and I would look you know with my head spinning 
and I would see all of these people, all of my friends and all of my acquaintances and peers just jumping in to groups and tables and just talking and such and I'm like how can I not do that and so I spent the majority of my time just waiting for people to come to me and sometimes that was a high and by and other times it was like okay how was your week, how was your weekend, how was the test and all this. But I really wanted to have conversations. I really wanted to get to know the person more and I wanted them to get to know me more because I always love sharing. And there has been a time in high school, I believe I was a sophomore in high school and I was going to my locker in Lower Dodge Hall and a few of my friends, um, or at least one of them was my friend, were talking about a subject that I was interested in and I wanted to chime in. So I kind of lingered a bit close and such and one of the friends was like, are you good Matt? I'll see you later. And I'm like, okay, i see you later, but I still wanted to see if I could chime in and have a conversation because I was interested in what they were discussing about. And so I continued to stand around and my friend shouted, dude, i see you later, or are you okay, or something like that. And I'm like, okay, and I just turned around and left and I never left that story and it made me even more traumatized and nervous. Even though, I mean, he was a good friend, but maybe... I don't know, for some reason he didn't want me to be there at that moment of time. B, I was just never asked. Okay, I can't use the word never. There have been rare times throughout my life that I was asked and sometimes I participated and once I got to middle school and older, I most, I, like if not 100%, just declined for whatever strange reason. And the reason transcends point A, which is that I was, I was just still nervous, and another reason is what I'm going to propose in the next two points. But the reasons that my friends never asked me, I really don't know and I'm not trying to accuse or anything like that whatsoever. But you know, I, I always wondered, I mean, they, they just never asked. And I, I know that a lot of them were true friends, but I just didn't express that I was feeling left out and lonely all the time. I didn't express that and again, I was nervous. C, could I trust them? And yes, I hope that a lot of my friends know that they could trust me and even to the present day, I'm a person that they could trust. And yes, I did trust a lot of my friends, not all of them 100%, but I did trust a lot of my friends. When I was in elementary school, I got the odd sense that a few people wanted to kill me and that they just had no idea that everybody only has one life and that if they do something and they think that it's just going to be for gags or just hurt me and they ac accidentally kill me, then it's like, I, so my childhood basically was filled with that type of fear. In elementary school, I often wondered if people knew that everyone had one life. It wasn't like a video game and I explained all of this in chapter 29 of my book. I mean, we only have one life and even if they thought it was just for pranks and that they were just going to startle me or even hurt me a little, they may not know that some of the things they might think would actually kill a person and such. And yeah, some were teasing, and I, even in retrospect, I knew that they were teasing. Like in grade six, when a person pretended to, uh, were, was teasing me by pretending to chuck a softball at me and such, and just to see me cower and everything. And that happened sometimes, and also when I was in seventh grade, a couple of eighth graders tried to trip me here and there, but then they put their foot down, but they just pretended to, they didn't try to. And that's probably because I was running to class. And some people, and even people I would consider kind of bit friends would actually do that just to get a little laugh, try to get me a bit startled and such, and sometimes it was hurtful. Now I do want to say that I had made a lot of friends and acquaintances, especially growing up in middle school and beyond, but back in elementary school, of course I had friends and some were more acquaintances and some I only knew in the classroom, and you know, we never hung out with each other, we only knew each other in the classroom and, and kind of worked together sometimes, but one, I was nervous to ask them if I could tag along during like recess or lunch, and two, again, could I trust them. Uh, some of my friends, I've overheard a lot of horrible things and things that might actually kill a person. And I mentioned this story in chapter 29 of my book. I tell a story that happened in fifth grade and we were in line after recess I believe and I overheard one of my friends talking to two other friends of mine about his friend borrowing his handheld Palm Pilot to play a game and I knew what game he was talking about because I played that game too and let's just say long story short he was at like a high level but our mutual friend ruined it for him and he was upset and he was gossiping about it and he told my other two friends I'm going to take this guy after school and beat his head against the bricks until it breaks. And then my other two friends were laughing about it, he was laughing about it, and I was so disturbed. And even though I could be sure that there is a near 100% chance that he would never do that in his life, but to an 11-year-old, I was disturbed. I was in fear over that. And of course, I always think that if that were to happen to somebody, it would be me, because in my psychology, in my brain, in my memories, when I was younger, I was picked on, insofar that I think I would have been a candidate for, that, for something like that to happen to. And sometimes I thought that maybe if we were outside of school and we were hanging out with each other 
and it's like finally socializing with somebody and it's just you know a few friends and I if they were to get that idea even if they were just trying to tease me or if they would actually get annoyed with me and actually do something like that then I would literally have no place to run and I believe the reason why it goes back to psychology again when I was younger it kind of gave me a lens of how everyone would treat me and guess what not everyone treats me like I was younger like back in kindergarten and when those people yelled at me saying go away you're not a friend and such so applying that psychology to this story when I was a few years younger like in third or fourth grade I would try to hang out with my neighbors and there were like four neighbors on the block two of them were my age like uh, in the same grade level as me and those two neighbors of mine who were my age they were kind of friends to me half the time and acquaintances the other half okay may maybe not necessarily the nicest acquaintances to be honest and sometimes they would vote me out of their presence not all the time and then there was one day when I thought that I was done for and I tried to spend time with my neighbors and they're like you have five seconds to get out otherwise you're never leaving and I actually challenged that and they got like this close next to me and they had their hands like this and they said if you're not out in five seconds I'm, we're going to grab you and take you in and you're never going to leave well they may have not said it that explicitly but their hands were like right there and they're counting one two three all the way to five and I continued to challenge it I'm sick and tired of being treated like this all the time and they kind of got me in and then I got in a panic that I was never going to leave and I was telling the parents about it because the parents were inside the parents were like let him go but I do want to say that they were friends at other times we invited each other to each other's birthday parties and, and as we got older and we saw each other in passing we would say hi and everything but there was one time and may God forgive me and he does and hopefully you won't blame me but there was a time when my neighbor had a tent outside and this is the neighbor who was my age and the other neighbor who was my age was also uh, with him and they happen to be cousins just to say and I come over and they're like oh sure you could be here so I got in the tent and all three of us were in there but it was too crowded and my neighbor my peer was saying somebody has to leave and he was actually this time telling his cousin the other person our age to leave and again may God forgive me and he does I was like yes finally it's not me this time and I was like eight or nine years old who was dealing with this type of life uh, since kindergarten but I apologize for gloating but that's what happened and again let me tell you it wasn't all the four neighbors remember there's four of them two of them were my age and the other two were a little bit younger than me and one of them was very shy and the other one was the best friend of the block just to say I spent a lot of time with him and he was a very good friend and it was actually that friend and I who were about to swim with each other but the mother got sick and I've been waiting and waiting and then I found out the news and it was canceled and I just got very upset inside I dialed 911 hung up and more about that in the comedic story that I already told. I'll link it in the card above. But I also remember that I think a, another thing with my brain is that I watched a lot of movies growing up, especially when I was young. Whether they were animated movies or they were like true stories or documentaries or something. I mean, I grew up watching those things and there were a lot of tragedies in those stories and I think that's why I made my life out to be very, very careful and, and I kind of also excluded myself from fun activities because what if like one in a billion chance something happened, something that could have been prevented. I just didn't want to deal with that. So sometimes there are things that are tragedies that are beyond our control and other things there are people that either get annoyed with somebody and don't realize that we only have one life and that they decide to uh, do something and so psychologically speaking that was what was in my mind and it made me not want to socialize that much I mean I wanted to socialize I really wanted to but could I trust them and now the fourth point and there might be more than four but D what the heck will we do I'm more traditional I like like classic conversations classic board games uh, puzzles and such um, I like walks around the neighborhood and basically 99% of my friends, they like video games and to tell you the truth, some violent video games, video games that A, I wasn't allowed to play and B, I wasn't really interested in that sort of stuff. In fact, that reminds me, one of the things that disturbed me when I was like nine years old was seeing like, I think it was Good Morning America or something. And they were discussing about violent video games and children's psychology. And they told a story there that I'm still disturbed today. It's not necessary if I repeat it, but let's just say that, you know, tragedies happen. People that play violent video games, when they're out in real life, sometimes they 
might think that they're still in the video game and such, if that makes sense. Oh, and also I just thought of is when I got older, like middle school and high school, a lot of us put away children's things and started to have conversations about other things and things that I just wasn't interested in talking about. I mean, some people talk about bands and music. Some people talk about sports and I wasn't interested in sports. And yes, some people talk about other things that I was also not interested in. And that ties in with my last point D, what the heck will we do? Because if I finally get invited to spend time with people, what would they think is fun? Would they invite me and then we'd sit around and then they would forget that I'm there and they would just be conversing on knowing that I'm there? Would that actually annoy them in not wanting to spend time with me ever again? And that is another big reason, in my opinion, why it's hard for some of us autistics to socialize. But again, I can't speak for everybody. So those are the four things that I have to offer and there might be more points and I might expound on each point and more as time goes on. But I think that this just suffice for the video. So if there's any questions or clarifications, please comment down below and I will try and answer them. I might make a separate video for it to explain further. And there are some times when I was at a point of total tranquility, total peace, just rare times and sometimes it lasted just four minutes and other times for seconds. Just moments just with my peers and it was just us hanging out. But they have happened but that goes beyond the scope of this video. But as God is my witness, I guarantee I always wanted to socialize. Whenever I was walking around in the neighborhood, whenever I was like outside juggling or inside my house looking outside and I see my friend's bike ride, I always got this, I don't know how to describe it, it's sadness left out, but almost angry at myself or more like at autism. I just got this enraged, left out, lonely, sad, forlorn feelings. And again, I hope that was helpful. The point of these videos is to encourage those on the spectrum and their families and friends, as well as to educate the ignorant that we are human beings that deserve to live on this earth. And there's a lot of people that just discriminate against us, uh, thinking that we're aliens from outer space. So I'm making these videos. That's why I published the book. And that's why I'm also getting out there. I was just in Newsweek. I was just in Spectrum News Los Angeles and a few radio stations. And there's more coming to educate more of this world and to encourage and motivate and inspire more of this world as well. But also if there's a question for what could the neurotypical do, number one, thank you for watching this video, but something that you could do is find someone who is on the spectrum and get to know the person and if that person is being bullied, stand up and advocate for that person. But again, classic advice, just get to know the person and invite them to tag along. But don't do it in a way that's going to intimidate them or make them feel nervous. Like, and that comes by getting to know the person and talking with them.